The test has just started. As you scan through the test, a smirk appears on your face as you already know how to solve every single question and are guaranteed full marks. What's up, my name is Melvin Fung, graduated with IB45 and have won multiple global math competitions and Olympiads. As someone who is pretty skilled at math and even enjoys doing math, a big mistake I see is that people often have the impression that the reason they're bad at math is because they're not gifted or talented. However, that is simply not true. Today, I'm going to expose all my secrets on how to succeed in math to the point where the so-called hardest subject in the IB, Math HL, became my easiest subject in the two years of the IB. In fact, make sure to stick along because I'll be sharing my secret on how to eventually score full marks without even studying for the test. First of all, fundamentals for math is paramount. I thought this was common sense, but I've seen a lot of you trying to do complex problems with weak ass fundamentals. Like trying to do this question without even knowing how to solve cos x equals 1 over 2. You need to work hard on building your fundamentals so when complex problems arise, you don't even need to think about the basics. What I would do is grab a textbook such as the Hayes textbook and just work through all the fundamental questions within a day and that's it. Next up, I want you to change your limiting mindset. The math is for the smart. Anyone can do good in it. Think about it, I would not be able to approach this question if I had never done something similar to it before. The only reason I'm able to do it on the test is because I've practiced for it before. What does this mean? It means that math is all about practicing a variety of questions so that you optimize your chances of seeing those similar questions on the test to be able to solve them. So the person with the highest math grade in your class didn't get there because he was smart but instead got there because he worked hard for it and was called smart after he got the high grades. You will be called smart too after working hard and getting those high grades. Therefore, there is a direct positive correlation with time study and marks gained for math. The more practice questions you do, the higher your chances of seeing those similar questions on the test and the higher your scores will be. However, when I talk about practice questions, I don't mean textbook questions. Because as you all know from experience, the questions you're assigned for homework from the textbooks never come close to what you face on the actual test. So what you should be practicing with is past school tests, past papers, and extracted past paper unit questions, which will optimize your chances of seeing similar questions on your test and being able to solve those. Now you might be saying, Melvin, that's great, but where can I find those extracted past paper questions? Now you've come to the right place. You have two choices when it comes to doing IB math. One, do this all by yourself, guessing what will work and learning through trial and error. Or two, have someone who's done this time and time again, who's gotten IB45, who's helped tons of other students achieve sevens just like you, where I can help you, guide you, and mentor you along the way to help make sure you get the results you want and get into your dream university. If you said option two, I'd love to introduce you to my course, Scholars Pact, where I provide you shortcut methods to easily get sevens in your tests, live feedback within 24 hours on your work and questions, group live calls, and resources such as past papers, past school tests, and extracted past paper unit questions to guarantee you get your deserved seven. And if you feel like this is something you want to do, make sure to check out the link down in the description below. If not, no problem. Either way, I just want to help you succeed in doing this. Additionally, I want you to treat your grades like playing a game, like climbing the leaderboard. For your next test, pick a target who always scores higher than you and try to beat them. Then afterwards, find another target and then another target until you become the highest scorer. The reason I want you to do this is because you need motivation. Once you have a goal, the journey becomes easy. Let me tell you a story. When I entered Math HL, I was the underdog. I came in from grade 10 Math SL, while everyone else came from grade 10 Math HL. My own math tutor said I would never make it, that I would never beat Sam. So I took that as a challenge, fired him, and made it my mission to beat Sam on the upcoming test. This challenge motivated me, made it fun for me to study. On the test, I completed the 80 minute assessment in just 20 minutes. As I looked around the classroom, I saw every single student struggling to do the test when I have already completed it. That genuinely put a smile on my face. Now call me a narcissist or whatever, but that was me enjoying the fruits of my labor. Hard work paid off. But I would not have been able to work hard without that initial motivation. After beating Sam, I got seven out of seven, but that was still not enough. I now needed to become the grade's highest scorer. So it was time to beat the next best person. And eventually I became the highest scorer. Next up, you should never leave your classroom until all your questions have been answered. I don't care how stupid your questions are. Ask it or regret it on the test. Now there's this one famous quote. The man who asks a question is a fool for a minute. The man who does not ask is a fool for a life. Now this quote, this philosophy is stuck with me 
for the two years of the IB. I stayed in the classroom until all my questions have been answered before leaving it. I don't care how stupid the questions are. I just don't want to regret not being able to answer a question on a test because I was too scared to ask a question during class. So always ask all your questions during class. Next up, I want you to take this actionable step, which is creating a math notebook. No one in my school did this except for me. After every class, make sure you understand the concept and write it down in a notebook. So when you're reviewing for the upcoming test, you no longer need to scavenge for information to relearn, but instead can just quickly scan through the notebook and get it over with. Additionally, I want you to write down any example questions you found challenging and think it will show up on the test. How you use this notebook is in the first few days of your study period and an hour before the test when you need to quickly soak up all the information. Now, on the test, you have to have the never give up mindset. Now, if you follow the steps covered so far, you should be able to approach every single question on your test. So try your hardest at them. However, also look at the points of the questions. If they are low points that take up a lot of time, then skip them and come back to them later. Now next, this is a very important step. You need to maximize sleep before the test. Now, I don't care how unprepared you are, you're not crime studying until 3 a.m. before the test. Focus on maximizing sleep. Get eight, get nine, 10 hours of sleep right before the test. So you'll be able to clearly think on the test and not make any careless mistakes. Because trust me, when I only had six hours of sleep during a computer science test, it took me 30 minutes to find the remainder of five divided by two. Therefore, make sure to sleep as much as possible before the test. This could be sleeping at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., something like that. Now, before you get to the last secret, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications if you've gotten value so far. Now, onto the secret that you've all been waiting for, how to get full marks without even studying for it. The secret that I'm currently employing, only a total of four hours of studying while everyone else is studying 10 hours a day and still getting full marks. And that is a combination of sleep, review notebook, and pass papers. If you're down on time, one thing I would recommend you focusing on is quickly reviewing the concepts and then jumping straight into past paper questions. However, if you seriously do not have the time for past paper questions, then I would instead strategically guess what questions will be on the test and then study for those type of questions. However, that is the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe and turn on notifications because I'll be posting many more study tips and guides for high school and college. Hopefully you guys got some sort of value so far. And for those of you in the IB, if you need help, join Scars Pack and I'll gladly help you. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.